We are already in a recession and that is a good thing. In this video, I want to share with you guys the data that's showing us time and time again that this is a very good buying opportunity for stocks, bonds or any asset class that has declined significantly because of the Fed's actions. We are starting to see inflation somewhat peak, but that is not the entire story when it comes to analyzing why all these recession fears and yield curve inverting fear mongering is completely useless. I know it seems like the economy is going to go into a depression, but I can assure you that the stock market just does not behave like most people think it behaves. And that is exactly what I want to verify in this video. But as usual, guys, before we get into it, make sure to drop me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. So the first thing I want to address today is why have stocks actually performed very well over the past few days? As you can see, this is a screenshot from a few days ago when my portfolio, which is primarily revolving around growth stocks, performed extremely well as compared to the entire market. The S&P 500 was up only a quarter of a percent or so, and this is the result in my growth stock portfolio. And the simple reason for this and why this is a good thing for the potential market bottom being somewhere in the near future is because of something called deep biotech ETF. Now, you guys might be saying, why are we looking at a biotech ETF when I'm investing in technology, clean energy stocks? Well, the biotech ETF is an indicator of the risk assets in the market. You see, this indicator started selling off in early 2021, starting in February, way ahead of the rest of the market and the NASDAQ and the S&P 500, which only started selling off back in November. So what this shows us is that this ETF essentially gives us an indicator of the risk asset profile of the market. And as we all know, when the market is going down, the riskiest assets are the ones that fall the first. And when the market is bottoming, it's the riskiest assets that go up first. And as you can see, over the past month or so, this index has outperformed all the other markets, even oil, S&P 500, NASDAQ, Dow Jones, all of them have been beaten by this XBI biotech ETF. And especially a few days ago, as you can see on the daily time frame, we had one of the best days this index has ever had. And that comes right after this double bottom at around that $62 level. If you don't know much about technical analysis, the only thing you want to keep in mind is that this double bottom formation is the main way that most stocks and markets tend to bottom. As you can see on the S&P 500 back in 2015, the market collapsed, then it rallied, and then it collapsed back again to that same area before it rebounded higher for the next two years. And the same thing happened in March of 2020. We had this pullback in 2018, but the market ended up coming down to that same general area around this $230 region. And that is precisely where the market bottomed and started rallying. Even though in the short term at that exact moment, it looks like the market's going to keep going down. But when people least expected, that is exactly when the market rallies. And so now let's look at some of the data that compares this to 2008. As you can see, if we put inflation into perspective, right now we are experiencing a pretty record amount of inflation. I'm sure you guys have already heard of that. But the key thing to keep in mind is that if people are crying about this recession happening and that this is going to cause the market to go down even lower and put us into a 2008 kind of depression, then why are we also worrying about inflation at the same time? People need to keep in mind that a recession is a deflationary event, meaning if you expect a recession to actually happen in the underlying economy over the next few quarters, then that means that inflation will most definitely start going down. And if inflation goes down, you know what the case is. The market is definitely going to start rallying higher because as we all know, that is the main driver that's been in the market for the past six months or so because of obviously the Federal Reserve. And the reality is that this recession that we're going through right now is nowhere close to any severe of a recession as many people have been thinking of it. The only thing that this recession has been affecting has been technology and obviously oil. And because of high oil prices, that has caused consumer confidence to go down. And as we all know, as consumer confidence goes down, demand destruction takes place, and that in turn also helps bring down inflation. And so this is a double-edged sword that we're playing with. Either you have a recession and we go into a deflationary period, 
or we go through a very peak high inflationary period, which is both obviously going to be a bad thing for the market. But the good idea here is that if both of these things are happening at the same time, this will actually result in a deleveraging and a good thing for the market in the long term. Because obviously, inflation is something the Fed doesn't want, and neither do they want a recession. And these things could potentially cancel each other out. And this brings me on to another thing that many investors are forgetting, which is the fact that the 12 month forward PE ratio of the S&P 500 is at record lows. This is the 10 year chart. And as you can see right now, this is not even updated to June and July, but this is at all time lows, very similar to 2018 and 2020. So you tell me, do you want to be a buyer during these times? Or do you want to panic sell and listen to the people on the media that are essentially telling you the news that you've already heard for the past six months. I'd much rather be a buyer because the risk potential to potentially this level is significantly lower than the reward potential to potentially this area at all time highs. And as we all know, I bet on America. I don't bet on any single news or macroeconomic event destroying the innovation that's taking place in this country. And if we now have a look at the next chart, as you can see, it seems like most of the community in America doesn't believe we're going to be in a healthy economy over the next 12 months. And for me, this is a good thing, because this means that I'm buying stocks at good deals. Recessions have always historically been a great time to invest, regardless of what's going on in the macroeconomic environment. And as we all know, interest rates and inflation don't really affect the long term growth of stocks, because inflation hasn't simply gone down for the past 100 years, the money supply has changed. And that in turn, actually adjust the way that we measure inflation. And so no two periods of inflation are the same. And because of that, it's very minimally effective to what the stock market's going to do in the long term. But more specifically, in the short term, we know that the main issues driving inflation are not only demand side, but also supply side. And the good thing is that PMI indices are actually starting to collapse, which is again, deflationary. Not only will the Fed be raising rates, which is something the market has already priced in if you look at the 10 year yield, but as you can clearly see, supply chain issues are easing, which is going to lead to a lot of inventory, which could cut prices at a lot of different tech companies and obviously retailers like we've already seen from Walmart and Target. This again is deflationary, which means that the Fed has another catalyst to stop cutting rates. And obviously, in a recessionary period, we all know what the Fed likes to do, they like to cut rates and start quantitative easing. Now, we don't know if we're going to go into that big of a recession, where the Fed needs to take action. But again, no matter where we go, either we go into a very light recession, and inflation comes down, or we don't go into recession at all. We know that the situation is starting to get a little bit better. And the biggest bombshell news that's come out over the past 24 hours that only further solidifies this argument is the fact that copper prices are now at their all time low for the past 20 months. This is the same price copper was at back in February of 2021. Guys, if you look at the inflation chart, February of 2021 is when inflation broke out to all time highs. And that is precisely the trend we have seen over the past six months. That is when this massive inflationary run actually started. And so if copper is now coming down to that same area, it tells us that there are more deflationary periods and effects out there in the market that are taking place than many people are talking about. The media just wants to talk to you and feed you the same information that we've been hearing for the past six months about inflation, us going to recession. And as we all know, when the media starts talking about an event for such a long period of time, at some point, the market stops reacting to it. And that is precisely what we could see in the market over the next few months. Now, obviously, in the short term, there's no way I can predict what the market's going to do. And I'm not saying that I can't predict what the market's going to do. All I'm trying to say is that the risk to the world right now investing in the market is very good. And the reality is that we're already in a recession, even if you don't feel like it being one, we are in a recession on paper. And it's these paper recessions that are often very light, that in my opinion, create a pretty good risk to the world buying opportunity, unlike the ones we saw in 2001 and 2008, where there was a lot more uncertainty than we are experiencing right now. As you can also see, the five year break even inflation rate is also collapsing over the past two months, which is again a bullish indicator for markets. And this thing tends to lead inflation, which means that CPI and PCE data for the next couple of months could go down based on this five year rate. And obviously that could act as a big catalyst for stocks. And so if you're looking to add into any of your positions, 
now could be a pretty good time to continue buying. And on top of that, the reality is that the underlying economy is behaving pretty well. If you go out there, small businesses and restaurants are at maximum capacity. And the only real recession we're seeing is in the tech sector, which obviously got overly inflated by the market in 2020 and 2021. But anyways, guys, make sure to drop me a thumbs up if you found some value from this video. Let me know down in the comment section below what moves you guys are making in the stock market. As you guys already know, I've been consistently dollar cost averaging in my stocks, and I do not see any real reason to be completely panicking and selling in this kind of market environment. But as usual, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.